Senator Bateman, thank you for joining us, sir. And it's uh, a big uh, news day. You just announced a short time ago that you're not going to seek re-election. And could you tell us a little bit about how you came to that decision, sir? Well, Max, uh, I've been thinking about it for a while. Um, as you know, my district's become very competitive. And um, yeah, right now I have 15,000 more Democrats and um, I was hoping for redistricting. And then I, I had heart issue and I just, and three weeks into my recovery, I had heart surgery at Morristown Memorial at a, a valve placed. And I've been doing it for 38 years and you know I have a new grandson and I just, uh, my family thought that, you know what, Kip, you've dedicated half your life to uh, public service maybe it's time to to take care of yourself so it was really a decision by my wife and my kids and myself and you know a tough decision because I, I love what I'm doing and I think I could have won again not without a tough tough campaign and it is a two-year term and I just wasn't sure if I, I should run and I made up my mind and you know it's, it wasn't an easy decision because uh, I have a lot of friends in Trenton and I really enjoy being senator you know, I'll miss it. How are you feeling? Every day a little bit better, I'm a little stronger. Um, you know, they had to break the breastbone, and so that's why I have the pain across the chest that I can't drive for six weeks. But um, every day I feel a little bit stronger, which is good. And now that I have a new valve, they say at some point I'll feel even better than I was. So that's 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 encouraging. Well, that's great to hear, Senator. It's a very difficult time in politics generally, and a perhaps a very soul-searching time for Republicans in New Jersey. What do you take away from the era that the Republican Party just went through with Donald Trump? And to what extent do you think this current terrain in its perhaps unsettled fashion contributed to your decision? There's no question it contributed to my decision, and I was never, you know, I was, I'll be honest with you, and, I, and I've told this people in the past, I was never a Trumper. I, I, didn't, I didn't vote for him. I didn't believe in uh, the, his style. Um, and I think he's hurt the Republican Party. And I, I think that there are a lot of factors out of my control, including the fact that, you know, I have an R behind my name and I'm proud to be Republican. But right now, I think the Republican Party in New Jersey and across the country really needs to, 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 redefine ourselves. And I, you know, the Republican Party that I grew up in is completely different than the Republican Party right now. And I, I think that's a factor. And I think that it's going to be a while before we can turn things around. But I think we can turn things around. But I just think that a lot of people just say, oh, my God, he's got an R behind his name. I can't support him. And I, you know, what happened in Trenton, I mean, in Washington a couple of weeks ago, is just, it was a disgrace. And I just, you know, I, uh, I think that that obviously weighed into part of the decision. And I just think it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a tough year for Republicans it's for a while. I think until people start to realize that, you know, we are, you know, a good party and we do have good ideas and that Donald Trump doesn't speak for all of us. I think it's going to take a while, but we'll get back. How do you revitalize and where do you see the leadership in the party contributing now to a reanimation of the Republican brand? Well, I think, you know, statewide, you know, I'm encouraged by Jack Chiarelli and Jack will be our nominee. And I think he's got a good chance of winning. I mean, it's a very difficult state for Republicans, as you know, Max. It's a very senior state. But Yes, he's a moderate Republican. And I always view Republicans, at least myself, as being moderate, you know, moderate on social issues, obviously try to be conservative on fiscal issues, but, you know, middle of the road. I think most people are middle of the road on their issues. You have the far left, you have the far right. I always try to be in the middle. And I think a lot of people, most people are in somewhere in that middle. And I think that Jack has a strong message. And I think that we're going to have to rebuild we're going to have to rebuild the Republican Party. It's not going to be easy because, you know, we don't have the finances and we don't have the numbers, but we have to start because you want to have a two-party system because government works much better, as you know, with two parties. Well, well, Senator, could you talk about that a little bit? We seem to be, uh, as a consequence of several factors, m perhaps most dramatically the Trump presidency in a position where we're looking at one-party rule. And, and 
based on your knowledge and experience of government, where do you think that puts the people of New Jersey right now? Well, I mean, as you know, it's been one party rule in Trenton for what, at least what, 10 years, right? Um, since Chris Christie left. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's good, makes for good government. And now we have one party control in Washington, one party control in New Jersey. And I don't think it's good. I, I really think you have to have strong representation from both parties because listen, you don't have to agree on everything, but you want to have, you know, say in, in what goes on. And, you know, basically in Trenton, they haven't needed our votes for the last, you know, eight years or so because they have complete control of, of both houses. And I, I don't think that's what our forefathers meant. And I really think that for government, it's better that, you know, and, and even in Somerset, I said for years, it'd be good if, you know, both parties were represented. Now it's going the other way. You know, for years it was Republican, now it's all deeds. But I just think people like the checks and balances. I think they like both parties represented. What is the most uh, egregious transgression by the Democrats? How are they overreaching now as they settle into a kind of comfort zone? And your announcement today gives them a, an even greater range to uh, a greater range of influence. And, and what do you see as the main problem with that? Well, I, I never had the problem where it was all R's and all, all D's. As you know, Max, you know, I got along very well and I still get along very well with my colleagues in the Senate. And I've done a lot of legislation with Senator Smith and others in, in a bipartisan manner because I look at trying to, to get the perfect solution. I don't care if it's an R or a D. Uh, idea. And so I never had, you know, they never treated me that way because actually when I was in majority, I treated them very well and they, they didn't forget. And so now when they've been in the majority, they, they've always treated me well. So I haven't had that constant battle R versus D. I, I've been very successful in bipartisan legislation, but listen, there's no question that, uh, you know, one party control for too long is not good. And they get out of hand and, you know, they, they railroad things through and, you know, they, they increase taxes and whatnot. You just, we don't have the votes and we're probably, you know, going to have a tough year hanging on to what we have now because of a lot of factors, including Washington. So, you know, I, I don't think one party domination is good, but I don't see it changing. In the Senator years. Bateman, your district changed significantly when you lost Bridgewater and South Brunswick entered in to the 16th. And when you looked ahead at the next two years, was it really a matter, or in part, did you find your decision informed by having to secure the seat now and then having to wait to see how redistricting impacted? Yeah, no question about it. And it was going to take a, you know, it was going to take a monumental effort. Not that it couldn't be done. Um, but, you know, when you have towns like Princeton and South Brunswick and, you know, Princeton, you know, they could support me 90% of the time in my voting record and still not vote for me. They just won't vote for a Republican. And, you know, I worked Princeton very hard and, you know, I did better than most Republicans in Princeton, but that's a town you're never going to turn. So, you know, when you start out an election, 15,000 votes behind, it's going to be hard to make that up. And, you know, it is a two year term. So, you know, the, the, they would spend over a million dollars against me. There's no question about it. Cause there's only about three or four really contested districts in the whole state. And the 16th, because it split, obviously that was one of the focal points for the Democrats. And, you know, they would bring in money from all kinds of PACs and, you know, you won't even know where the money's coming from. And, you know, I'm not afraid that they've been trying to beat me for 38 years, but you have to at some point take a look at it and say, is it worth it? And, you know, it is a two year term. Who knows what's going to happen in, in, two, in two years? And so, you know, it, the time was right for me to say, you know what? It's been a great run. I've enjoyed every 38 years of it and I've met wonderful people. So, you know, I have no regrets and I, I go out knowing that I hope I contribute a little bit to, to the betterment of New Jersey. Well, sir, uh, do you have any thoughts on who your successor might be or who the Republicans could put up to yeah. carry on the tradition, the best traditions of a yeah, new Republican yeah. party? At this point, Max, I have no idea who's interested one of the reasons why I announced early was to give the county chairman in Hunter and, and Somerset adequate time to recruit some good candidates. So I, I don't even know who's interested because I, you know, people I think up until today thought I was running for your election. So I'm sure the names will start coming out this week, but uh, I'm sure there's plenty of great candidates out there. And, and what are you going to miss most about it, Senator? Obviously you have 
and that's a year to go. But, but what do you see as that part of this business that, that you'll miss most? Yeah, what I'll miss most is really, you know, helping my constituents and, and, and make, okay. making a small difference in, in trying to make New Jersey a more affordable, mm -hmm. better place to live. And, I, you yeah, know, I have, I have great relationships across the aisle, but uh, there's no more, there's no better satisfaction when a constituent okay. calls you with a big problem and you are able to um, help that individual. And, you know, okay. over the years, we've helped thousands of people. And you know what? That's why I got involved in public service to help people. So I'll miss that aspect of it. Senator, uh, it's been a, a privilege covering you and, and knowing you to this point, and I look forward to continuing to see you, although I, I have to take issue with getting a raffle ticket for Harley Davidson, which I really wanted <laughs> and I didn't get. <laughs> but, but other than that, uh, it's been great, Kip. And, uh, it has been. I just truly great. wish you the, the best and thank you so much for your service. And I okay. think that the people of the district of the 16th district always felt that we were served with integrity and with uh, gravitas and, and with, with a certain grace. Well, thank you, Max. And you've always been covering me and I appreciate that. Listen, we can still talk. I'll, I'll miss our conversations, but uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to finish out my term, I hope. And, uh, Absolutely. No question about it. And we'll be there every step of the way. And thank you so much, sir, for your service. Thank you, thank you for your time today, Senator. And I'll, see you, I'll see you back at that rally for that Harley. There you go. When we get out of this damn scourge. <laughs> Take care now. Be well, Kip. Thanks, Thanks man.